New Delhi. India has put its special forces on standby in the wake of crisis in Maldives following appeals from the island nation opposing leader and the judicial figures for its swift military intervention. The forces could also come in handy if the government needs to evacuate the Indian nations from the neighboring countries. Narendra Modi's government move came after the exiled former Maldive president Mohammad Nasheed appeals to India to send an envoy supported by its military to free the Supreme Court judges and other detained held by the Abdullah Amin government following the imposition of the emergency on the Monday night. On behalf of Maldivian people, we humbly request India to send envoy backed by its military to release the judges and Paul detainees. We request a physical response and presence. Nasheed, who is currently in Colombo, said in a Twitter post on Tuesday. India has readied its special forces, comprising airborne troops and naval assets in the southern India for deployment at short notice. People aware of the deployment said. The government is weighing its options and closely monitoring the situation, including safety of the Indian national as well as the citizens of other friendly nations in the Maldives. The government had not prepared any formal orders for deployment till late evening on Tuesday. An external affairs minister spokesman of India said, We are disturbed by the declaration of state emergencies in Maldives. Following the refusal of the government to abide by the anonymous ruling of the full bench of the Supreme Court on February 1, 2018, and also by the suspension of the constitutional rights of the people of Maldives. The arrest of the Supreme Court Chief Justice and political figures are also reasons for the concern. Experts said the special force can breach Maldives within hours if needed. India's options for intervention include naval assets that can be deployed within few hours, as well as airborne assets including C-17 and C-130J special operation aircraft, they said. India has refrained from pushing Yamin over the past five years, fearing he would further embrace China. But it is time for India to act tough, said an expert, who did not wish to identify. Yemen is strongly backed by China, and the Maldives administration has been allergic bribed by Chinese firms to win many contracts. But on the other hand, China today opposed any military intervention in Maldives, saying such a move would further complicate the situation. A day after, former Maldivian President Mohammad Nasheed sought India's help to resolve the political crisis in the island with its Indian force of army. The picture Indian Ocean archipelago plunged into a political chaos last week when the country's Supreme Court ordered the release of nine imprisoned opposition politicians, maintaining that their trials were politically motivated and flawed. When asked to the comment on Nasheed's calls to India, Chinese Foreign Minister spokesperson Heng Xiong said, the international community should play a conservative and constructive role on the basis of respecting the Maldives' sovereignty instead of taking measures that could complicate the current situation. Nasheed, his country in exile in Sri Lanka, yesterday tweeted that India should send an envoy backed by its military to release judges and the leaders of the political parties detained by the President Abdullah Yamin. Asked how the situation could resolve internally when Yamin has arrested Supreme Court judges as well as the former president Mohamun Abul Ghaim, Kang said, China's stance is that the relevant party should find a solution internally. I made myself clear. We hope relevant parties in the Maldives can properly resolve the issues through consultations and restore the national stability and social order as soon as possible. We believe they the wisdom and the capability to address the situations independently, he said without mentioning India. Kang skirted around the question on whether China is also asking Yemi to hold talks with the political parties to resolve the crisis. He also sought to refute allegations by the Maldives opposition party that China is backing Yemin because he approved several Chinese projects and signed the controversial free trade agreement with China during his visit to Beijing in December 2017. As the tension between India and China and Maldives is going on with the internal political affairs of Maldives, uh, amid political turmoil, Maldivian President Abdullah Yemin has said he was sending envoys to three friendly nations. China, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. India is not on the list. A statement from President's office said the three envoys would visit friendly nations and provide updates on the current situations. 
than may have already reached China and Pakistan it said. The announcement came after China, with apparent difference and references to India on Wednesday, cautioned against outside interference in the Maldivian affairs, saying it would complicate the situation. New Delhi received multiple appeals from their country's exiled former president Mahmoud Nasheed the last few days to intervene to resolve the deepening political crisis. He said on Wednesday that his countrymen viewed New Delhi's role positively. During 1988 crisis, when India were not occupiers but liberators, Indian troops then sailed into the Maldives and saved the president, Mahmoud Gayum, from being toppled. India has now said it was disturbed by the situation in Maldives. So what do you think of the big tension between India and Maldives going on on the ex and the former and the present president of Maldives? Will anytime soon or did India send the troops to militarize or invade Maldives or to liberate Maldives? After the Maldives signed a free trade agreement with China in its operation move, India on Thursday broke its silence on the matter saying that it expected the Indian Ocean archipelago nations to be sensitive to New Delhi's concerns. Stating that India adds the highest importance to its relations with Maldives. The External Affairs Minister spokesperson of India, Ravish Kumar, said that the two countries have strong historical and civilizational linkages and also at the people to people level. We are also committed to support the democracy, development, and stability in Maldives, Kumar said in this weekly media briefing here. It is our expectation that as a close and a friendly neighbor, Maldives will be sensitive to our concerns in keeping with its India's first policy. The main opposition Maldives Democratic Party, led by the former president Nasheed, raised a red flag after the FTA was rushed through parliament on November 29 in a record one hour without any debate. What was surprising was that it was signed even after the Maldives president, Abdullah Yamin, during a visit to India in New Delhi said that his country would sign an FTA with India first. But regarding Amin's visits to China earlier this month, Kumar said, we feel that so long as the development of the bilateral relationship between the two countries can be contribute to peace and stability in the region, we should welcome that too. So what do you think of sudden U-turn of Maldives having a FTA signed up with China rather than India? Is China is behind everything in Maldives' political and economy? Or India is well behind and did not have anything to do with Maldives? This one acre farm in Kenya is a little slice of paradise for farmers John Obam and wife Mary. It's filled with all kinds of food like cowpeas and pawpaws. But it wasn't always this way. Near Lake Victoria, the farm lays in a hot, dry region suffering from a changing climate. These smart farming techniques have transformed his farm and his income. They build resilience, protect the environment, and reduce greenhouse gases that cause global climate change. Instead of just growing sorghum once a year, John grows a variety of crops year-round. If one fails, he always has the others. A grove of mostly cashew trees brings extra income and sucks carbon from the atmosphere. Thickets of trees have replaced barbed wire fences, and the animals' pens are raised, making it easier to use manure as organic fertilizer. In this region, water is life. It only rains twice a year, and because of climate change, the rainy seasons are starting later and ending sooner. Samantire oro ange piauka mai wodo kum ridok malo kora ageng eh kora donya na yao kuro giga ke okanyal to kora sane kata ko kara ching nitie tani gi pi on weekends and holidays the children help with the farm 
But now, John and Mary earn enough money for school fees for all eight of their children, plus an orphan they care for. Word is spreading to farmers throughout Kenya about climate-smart farming. John visits a neighbor struggling because the rains are late. On this traditionally run farm, cow manure is wasted as a potential fertilizer. Fences of cut wood and barbed wire don't retain soil nor provide fodder. There is little shade. And without water catchment, the tomato crop is withering. There are no other crops, no diversification. In the face of increasing dry spells, Kenya is promoting climate smart practices to protect and boost its wealth, the wealth of its farms, its people, and its wildlife. These iconic African animals roam the Samburu National Park. It lies in the heart of the homelands of the Samburu people. This area gets even less rain, and livestock herding has allowed the Samburu to survive in a water-starved region for generations. But the population has grown, and because of climate change, the rainy season is shorter and brings less rain. The natural grasslands that support both the Samburu's herds and wild animals have become sparse and degraded. So the Northern Rangelands Trust is adopting climate-smart techniques to herding that make farmers more resilient to climate change, protect the environment, and reduce encroachment in the neighboring national park. Just like with farming, climate-smart practices improve the livelihoods of herder families, like that of Thomas Leletto. He has combined his 40 cattle with the livestock of 11 other families so that the animals graze more efficiently as a concentrated group. This plot of land was set aside as a no gray zone for months so that the grass matures, is bountiful, which also retains more carbon in the soil. The animal's hooves naturally till the hard packed soil making a fertile bed for seeds of a hardy and fast-growing grass that will sprout in the rainy season. But enforcing the rules isn't always easy. The NRT buys the cows directly from the herders, so herders don't have to march them to distant markets. That means the cows stay healthier, and can be sold at a younger age. Over their shorter lifespans, they consume less grass and produce less greenhouse gas emissions. Diversification is also important here. Instead of families depending solely on their cattle for wealth, Samburu women are becoming more resilient by turning traditional beadwork into another source of income. One of Thomas's three wives is Neitemu Leletu, She's now selling her beaded jewelry and household <laughs> items to markets in Nairobi and beyond. As Kenya moves toward more climate-smart practices, it has embraced some innovative ways to motivate farmers. Bernard Oliak receives a small payment from the World Bank Biocarbon Fund for the trees he grows and farming in a climate-smart way. So carbon stays in the soil and trees rather than in the air. But the incentive goes beyond the cash reward. As part of the program, Bernard receives training on sustainable practices that have made his farm more productive and less costly. Kaluwore gi training ma aseyudo, nitie lokruok e weche mag korka jamni to koro miyo dhera bedo kod chiemo kata diere oro. Koro mano miyo an gi chak. Now trees shade his cows. Cool cows produce more milk. He sells seedlings to other farmers for a profit. And in about five years, he'll be able to sell the lumber for a windfall of about $300.
Recently, his farmers group received its first carbon payment. They decided to use it to diversify their production and make them even more resilient. Wachano mar mede pesa moro mondo wanyiew go some equipments manyalo konyo kaka in Kenya, more than 20,000 smallholder farms are now part of the program, increasing crop yields up to 20%. Climate smart practices are expanding and multiplying. Herders and farmers alike are finding that one good turn leads to another. They are breaking out of vicious cycles and creating virtuous cycles. They make money, save money and save time. Post your comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and follow us in social networks and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. This is WC Daily. Think big, think different. Bye.